very pleased with the way I played. I mean, definitely expecting more for myself to play better tennis. Yeah. Um, definitely, I'll be playing Barakat in the semi-finals, so definitely a very good match and to win it by God's grace. They are trying, I mean, we need more tournaments, I mean, we really have about four or five, I mean, we need more, definitely, so they are trying in their own aspect. Definitely the Williams sisters, because the fact that they are black and they were basically the only blacks, but they were also from America, so I also wanted to be one of those people that will make history coming from Africa because not really a lot of people come from Africa. Even though they are from Africa, they are from South Africa. But they are still white. So we want someone from, like, someone black from West Africa to represent the country up there. So that was what really motivated me to play tennis. Um, definitely with our president, he's been doing an amazing job, no doubt. Bringing new tournaments, I mean, he's been doing a great job. Um, definitely if we have more people like him, tennis will go higher, for sure. Yes, I just finished playing my game. I won the game uh, 3-0 and the person crashed. We are lacking sponsors. That is where we are. Can you imagine um, last uh, ITF, last ITF that played a host in Nigeria, the uh, top seated one from Kenya. I beat her 6-4-6-3. Six, four, six, four, six, seated one, 6-4-6-3, six, six, and she's world number 64. So you can imagine that if we are, if I thought that Nigeria has people that sponsoring them, you will imagine we the 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 our ranking, our ranking will come up, and because we are, don't have anybody to sponsor us, we are not have sponsors. That's why we are where we are today. Oh, I'm expecting to reach finals to play finals because this is my first time of playing this uh, dive the, the, the championship. Because last time I just came back from uh, Switzerland. The, the time took me, so I couldn't make it. Mm. So this is my first time of playing this tennis. Nice. It has been long I've been playing tennis. The tennis that I've been playing, I'm just playing it for fun, but I'm seeing myself on top. Uh, the challenge is, uh, number one, uh, good reach here, sponsor to outside country, playing quali uh, qualifying for World Tea Cup, para tennis, uh, which are in Paralympic. You know, we have to get uh, people that will sponsor us so that we will be traveling outside to make it to qualifying for the World Team Cup uh, uh, Paralympic. I'm a para-athletist. Yes, I just uh, finished uh, Tokyo 2020. I'm one of the Paralympians there. Good morning there, Wolf Wolf Zuzu, and uh, not forgetting Mary of Edwards, at least talking about tennis ongoing at the MQA Abiola Stadium where they've been playing. Well, for Wolf Zuzu, that's the first time playing tennis qualifying for the semi finals. And for Mary of Edwards, who has been doing the business, also says she's hoping that she gets to the final of the tennis championship taking place there at MQA Abiola Stadium. Welcome here on the show proper 360 Sports. On Trust TV, I am Adini Aji Shafe. Joining me, as usual, is Olawale Peters. Good to have you. Good morning, Adini. It's a pleasure to be here. Yes, uh, we just saw there briefly that tennis, tennis players are having the field of the day at the MKABLA Stadium. They are going to also be playing the CBN. Uh, that, that, that particular event has stayed for 44 years. And that's a good one out there, just to at least have a feel of other sports. It's not always football every time. That's why the program is called 360 Sports, to make it all around that. Now, we'll be starting with basketball basketball story. Just yesterday, news actually came out that uh, the federal government of Nigeria has actually suspended basketball for two years due to the uh, lingering crisis that rocked the leadership of that particular federation. Well, as it is, it has been confirmed for the next two years due to that uh, issue coming up, basketball will be on standby in Nigeria. Well, a lot of Nigerians are not happy with this. Some are saying, well, what's happened between concerning the leadership crisis between uh, Mark Igoche and also Musa Kida? The two of them have been at Loggerheads, who is the uh, substantial N uh, N NW uh, MBBF, rather, MBBF president. And Musa Kida is not backing down. Mark Igoche is not backing down. 
and this is really having a toll on our uh, basketball teams and also participation in competitions. We've seen where either they actually got there late or money issue or a lot of crises. To some, to some side, they believe, okay, it's good. At least let them suspend them. Why some side are say, okay, what about the, the grass that is suffering the fight of the two elephants, meaning these basketballers on the screen? Okay, and to me, personally, it's a good development. That's the truth. And because we are talking about a way forward, for a very long time now, we've been having this issue, um, this part also. We have two president, we have two board, we have two management team managing one association. So I think the best thing to do is what they have done. They didn't um, outrightly ban the game of basketball in Nigeria, but they would not allow. Uh, they will not sponsor or they will withdraw or suspend their support when it comes to international uh, participation, mm. So, which is a very good one. However, like rightly said, it's also not a good one for the Tiger and the Tigress, knowing fully that in the next few months now, they're supposed to go to Sydney, Australia, to play. But, in, yes, to play imagine. In, in, in the World Cup. Mm. Also, for the uh, in Tigress, also, they're supposed to play the qualifiers for the 2023 Nations Cup, we will be affected, yes, but if it, this is what will make us to get it right. Sincerely, it's a welcome development, mm. a welcome development so that we can go back to the grassroots. And um, interestingly, this is not the first time we started a process like this in this country, but this is the first, this is the first time we are executing such process. What do I mean? If you recall vividly in 2010, after um, our woeful performance at Korea Japan World Cup, mm. the then uh, Good Luck Jonathan administration, they said we cannot continue like this. So he wants to suspend um, the Nigerian football, uh, football authorities, as it were called. Then they were not going to participate in any international competition, uh, competition again. So people came in, FIFA said, no, we have to reverse that decision. We didn't. 2011, a year after, we failed to qualify for the Nations Cup. In fact, I was at a stadium here where we drew 2-2 to Guinea, so we failed to qualify. And I said, no, this is what I'm going to do. So the FIFA came in, the uh, sport authorities too, they came in, and they made a promise that we are going to solve our problem, and this issue will not repeat itself again. That was what led to the appointment of late Stephen Keshi as the chief coach of Nigeria in 2011. And what happened during the Nations Cup in 2013? We won the Nations Cup. We didn't stop at that. We also qualified for the World Cup. So that shows that we know the right thing to do in this country. But the, the attitude of, no, I don't want to ask if you are here to serve people. That's the truth. And this, uh, the FIBA we're talking about, they are currently standing 22nd in the FIBA world ranking. So they are very, very good. Yes, you said it right. When uh, two, the two elephants, elephants are, fighting. are fighting, the grass will suffer. But at the end of the fight, either of the elephants may die, but the grass will still grow again. Mm. That is the truth. And that is what we need to do right now. We need to go back to that grassroots to start it, to develop it. It doesn't stop the uh, local... And investing. every league will be it ongoing. Will At be least ongoing. everything will run. Yes, it will be ongoing. It's all international participation. And, and the issue of... Okay, people were also asking, would um, the FIBA not come and say they want to sanction Nigeria? It's not, it's not an issue of them sanctioning us. We, what the federal government said is, I cannot sponsor them again. And there's no clause in the article of the FIBA that said it is a must for must the sponsor. federal government to sponsor them. <laughs> so if the FIBA didn't it fit that, okay, I want to sponsor them. Let them come, sponsor them, and take them. As far as we are concerned, we cannot continue to be wasting taxpayers' money on this issue. It is mm. very welcome and good development. I hope it will not stop there also. Mm. It won't stop there also. it won't stop there also. We should go to other sports activities when we are we'll having have such, issues. such issues like that and do the same thing. So, um, Dari, the Minister of uh, Youth and Sport, I'm sure he borrowed the template used by a Billy Jonathan in 2010, 2011 to resolve the issue we had about the uh, pro performance of the Super Eagles, the NFL, then to use it to armor them. So, I think it's a very welcome development. Both the two years, it's what people have been saying. Yeah, it's so long, right? It's something that will outlive them. The administration they are living by me next year. <laughs> so why are you saying two years? Why not a year? 
Okay, because as it is now, uh, next year we have another election, and from the way it is, anything can happen. We don't know who is going to be there, but uh, so far, uh, the, the basketballers, well, it's so painful, especially for D Tigress, looking at what they've been doing so far. So painful. The World Cup is there, and from the way it is right now, those ladies may not be able to go. But so very, I really feel for D Tigress. I know how this is going to be a big blow to those ladies because they've been at the forefront, yeah. followed by D Tigers. But so far, we've been talking concerning the uh, two years uh, suspension of Nigeria participating in any international competition that has to do with basketball, the Duncan Slam sport by the federal government. Government called Slav, the Federal Ministry of Youth and Sport. Well, as the two elephants, Musa Kida and Maki Goche, won't back down on the leadership position that has to do with Nigerian Basketball Federation. That decision has to be uh, taken and has been done right now. Let's see what happens concerning it. Although local competition will be ongoing, anyone that wants to organize competition can actually do so. We have different clubs in Nigeria, but right now we don't have anything that has to do with international bodies. So let the basketballers in the home scene here enjoy their basketball. And those who are playing outside, let them also enjoy their basketball. Now we've been talking concerning that particular story. Let's quickly look at another one trending. African University Games will be coming up in Kenya, precisely in June. But a team from Nigeria University called Team Unizik, they will be representing Nigeria uh, in football, and they are the first team to represent Nigeria when it comes to female football. And this really, they deserve accolade for this. They actually came toward over their Nuga Games, but for the fact that their uh, antecedent in this particular competition has been fantastic. So Unizik, a female team, representing Nigeria over there in Kenya at all African University Games that will be coming up in June. And the good thing is that the uh, university are right now calling for support so that the ladies can at least be there and they let them perform very well. Okay, uh, a good development, mm -hmm. um, but I have a different opinion also. Mm -hmm. So what's the purpose of them representing Nigeria when they also have been on strike for years? Mm -hmm. That is the truth. So why don't they just go in solidarity? We are not representing the country. And let the world know the reason why they are not representing the country. Because of the ASU strike. Because of the ASU strike. Because what the reason why they are in school is because of their academics. That's the truth. However, this one is an add-on which can propel and give the country a good name. They've done best during the Noka game, so they are represented for the first time. Let them also try and do, I mean, sincerely, because I don't really see the need to celebrate someone coming from the University of uh, Unizik, Unizik, Unizik University. University, why they are on strike. Sincerely, mm. for how many months have they been at home? And for how many months are they still going to continue to be at home? This is a high time. The down tools totally mm. so that the federal government will know that this issue really need to be given attention. Good one for them. They've qualified. They've done the country proud. But the country also should do the right thing by making them proud. Well, I just hope that everything goes well. They are talking about all African university games that will be coming up at Kenyatta University in Nairobi, Kenya. Now let's talk about volleyball. African Nations Club volleyball is ongoing over there in Tunisia. Uh, well, the team uh, representing Nigeria are there, Nigerian Customs. They qualify for uh, the quarterfinal. They'll be facing Ethiopian club with Elijah Dishar. But despite the fact that they lost their game against Gizagara of Rwanda, and also uh, they still made it uh, to qualify for the quarterfinal, we hope that they will do well in that quarterfinal after amassing about 270 points in their game against Gizagara. But for Nigerian custom team, the volleyball team, they are ready to at least see the, the Ethiopian team through getting to the uh, quarterfinal, also making it to semi-final, looking at that particular competition coming up in Tunisia. We hope that uh, uh, team uh, customs will actually do us proud over there in Tunisia. Away from there, quickly, let's look at some matches that were played in the Nationwide League One. The Nationwide League One is third tier of Nigerian Football League, where Bagada FC, the, the uh, named uh, uh, FC Robo Warriors, by Lame Go, Hope of Glory 3, Risky's FC 2. You have Aimba FC 5 nil against Jaguar. The Jaguar couldn't run well. Aimba won 5 nil. KJ United 1, Makunkele uh, FC nil. Chika Malami 2, and you have Jedu Academy winning away 4 2. Kano Stars, uh, they won their game against Standard FC 2 1. ABU Walkers 3, and you have Superstar Striker Sheikh Arada. They actually lost that game 1 3 2. ABU Walkers. Azuba FC won their game against. Against Delos FC 3 0. While Wiki Feeders, they are the feeder team to Bouch uh, Wiki uh, Tories, they won their game 5 against Misao United. While Ashana FC lost against uh, Binani FC 
by three goals to nil. Those are the results. A, a lot of matches were actually played in this particular NLO, but we just have to pick 10 uh, to show. We have a lot of teams that play in the top tier of Nigerian league. I, I know you always smile with the names of those clubs, <laughs> but really, they are very Nigerian. Yeah, they are very Nigerian. Bagada FC. Everybody knows that Bagada is in Lagos also. Okay, so it's a very good one also, sincerely. And I think I must give it to the uh, Kano, the Kano Stars. I think they've been doing very well when it comes to this particular competition. Unlike their senior brother, that they are trying to weather the, the, re the relegation. So I think it shouldn't stop like this, sincerely. It is high time that we look at players from this same league that can, because uh, the, for the Kano, for example, now, they all belong to the same government. Mm. Okay, let's try and see two or three players that we can pick that will represent the senior team, the Kano Pillars, in the Nigerian Professional Football League. Mm. That will make the senior boys to, to sit buckle up. up. To buckle up. Like we do normally have in Europe, if they're not performing very well in the senior team, they'll take they'll you. They'll draft you in. In, in. So go and be playing uh, the youth academy or whatever. So that will make you to sit up to know that, okay, the, uh, the, the shirt is not automatic. You have to fight for it. And you have some people that they are hungry and eager to make a name for themselves. So this is a very, very good one. Then for the Messiah United, I think they have to change their name from that United. <laughs> because you know what is happening to Manchester, to Manchester United. United. Oh, so come on. You just have linked Missile with Manchester United. My goodness. Well, I just hope uh, that we we'll actually make them change their name. Well, we've been looking at the NLO, that's Nationwide League One, the third tier of Nigerian Football League. Now let's talk about uh, NFL, Nigerian Football Federation. We know that uh, very soon uh, election will be coming up, uh, precisely in September or thereabout. But a lot of uh, ex Nigerian footballers, that's they, they are right now throwing their uh, a hat into the ring. Peter Saidida, a former goalkeeper of Nigeria, who is now a pundit over there in South Africa, and also Benedict Akwebu, who also played football with a lot of clubs in Belgium, Austria, is also throwing his hat. In fact, Akwebu is saying we will do his own without taking salary, taking a cue from uh, Samerito Fields, who actually is doing that and he's saying they should not pay him the salary. He wants to really do something about Cameroonian football. So Akwebu, rather, Benedict Akwebu, Peter Saidida, and a whole lot of other ex footballers. Uh, it's as if uh, a tool, George Ware has opened their eyes to see that, okay, you can actually vie for any position. It's not limited to the, uh, the politician or the administrators alone. You players, all you need to do is, so far you know the rudiments are actually govern football. The technicality that surround the running the affairs of football, you can't vie into this position. Sincerely, this is a very good development. And um, this is the best at a high time for us to look at people that really understand or that have done or that have, uh, that have played the game of football before to come and run the football as a football administration, not as a politician. But that is the problem we are having in this country now. Now, uh, Benedict said he wants to do it free of charge because the country has done a lot for him because you cannot uh, measure all the achievements he has achieved in life when it comes to the game of football without mentioning his fatherland, Nigeria. He has played for Nigeria, he scored almost uh, 13, 13 goals or, uh, or, or so. So that shows that the country has done a lot for him. So this is the best time for him to come and give back to the country, what the country has given to him. The same thing with uh, Peter Said Ida. So this is what we are talking about. These are the people that are ready to do a selfless service for the country, not those that are looking for what to take into their pocket, mm. but they are looking for their own self, self, selfish act mm. to be perpetrated. And also this is a call for other Nigerian international, instead of saying, um, and going for doing an advert for, oh, am I going to do this advert? Am I going to do this advert? I'm not. This is the best time for you to mm. go into what do you think we really need in this country and how you can contribute, not to be promoting Bet King or whatever. Mm. So this is high time for you to look at whatever you have today. It is the game of football, Nigeria, that gave it to you. So come and give it back to the country. Sincerely, I wish we can have a process that will say whoever is going to be the next NFL president, president should be an ex-footballer. Mm. I, I wish it is possible to have that. So if it's not possible to have that, let's choose one of them who really understand the technicality. So I, I love the fact that you said who really understand because uh, not every footballer or ex-footballer can actually manage or govern well. Because we've seen situations whereby some of them are coaches now, we know how they are struggling being a coach. Although they play the football to the highest level, despite that, they couldn't or they have not been able to manage well. Meanwhile, some are very good in administration to become maybe a scout, some are good in uh, a boardroom 
politics like okay you are the sporting director of a particular team the the one like a uh, mike Minalo mm -hmm. or Lofi Jano, what they are doing right now why some are scout they face that scouting boy uh, for, for young footballers to take them uh, at least on there to professional why some are very good uh, just the way eto is changing the face of football in cameroon uh it has been what anybody is right trying trying to emulate because wow so eto actually have this kind of good administrative uh, uh, skills is working for him although in uh, Côte d'Ivoire, they are not accepting that uh, for Drogba to come out and actually coming forth or thought that shows that he there is more of politics than football. Yeah. But really in Nigeria, we know what is at stake here. Uh, to be candid, we shouldn't deceive ourselves in more of politics than football. Okay, you see, uh, apart from knowing what to do uh, at a manager, what did you call a manager? Who do you call a manager? Someone that gets things done through other people. Mm -hmm. so that's the truth. Simon Etofu may not have all the knowledge, all the expertise to run it, but who are the people that he surrounds himself the, yes, with? Yes, the board members. The board member that he surrounds himself with. That is what we are talking about now. Mm. Let's take Amadou Pinik away from the NFL. What about the other board members? They are who still are there. those people that we really know they have a name when it comes to technicality in the game of football? None. Mm. So it's not only about Amadou Pinik, it's all about the entire NFL board. I can't wait for their tenure to expire. To, to well, we're waiting to see what's going to happen. Nigerian football with so much uh, uh, issue there. Now, let's uh, quickly talk about the big one that happened just yesterday. Tottenham All Sport showing class against Arsenal in the London Derby. Good one for Tottenham All Sport demolishing Arsenal by one, two, three goals. <laughs> good, one, good one for Tottenham demolishing for, Arsenal? Yes. <laughs> I, hope, I hope the Arsenal fan will not wait for you after the well, show. At least they lost that game. So, <laughs> absolutely. I saw. Woefully. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony Conte really got the key, actually opened the door and dealt with Arsenal just that, yesterday. That's what, we are, that's, that's what uh, experience does, okay? So once you have the experience, you know what to do. When he played with Liverpool, the style of play he, um, he used against Liverpool is different from the style of play against Arsenal. That is the truth. Mm. So he outclassed the um, Arsenal team and sincerely the next two matches for both Liverpool I mean, sorry, for both Tottenham and Arsenal, will really, really, but sincerely, it's going to be very difficult. Because if you look at the next two matches for Arsenal, I don't know how they're going to beat Everton. Because Everton currently now, they need to win all their the games. three matches. So for Arsenal to beat Everton, it's, um, I don't know, they it's, will have po it's, it's possible. Extra but bug club. Bug club. <laughs> then also they are playing against Newcastle. Newcastle also, I think they are currently 14 on the log table. But they would like to finish among the top 10. Mm. Because if you look at the Premiership, you have uh, the, the top 4 battle, the top 6 battle, the top 10 battle, and the relegation battle. They've already escaped the relegation right now. That's the Newcastle. Mm. But they are looking at the top 10. So they are going to face out. Tottenham also, they have their own also to face. Burnley, they are, they are playing Burnley also. Burnley also, they are currently, currently not in the good position. So it's going to be a very tough one. Good one. Good one there for Tottenham All Sport. Congratulations to them for beating Arsenal. As you don't know, I'm so happy about it. Although for Arsenal fans, you will bounce back. Now, quickly, before we run out, so let's quickly look at the result of Spanish La Liga that took place over there in Spain. Looking at the result of La Liga there, where Sociedad so actually beat Cadiz 3 0, Vallecano 1, Villarreal 5, and Real Madrid. Good one for them. 6 0 against Levante. You have to give it up to Real. Despite winning the lead, they are still beating everyone. And before we go, well, Coutinho right now has been confirmed as a permanent player of Axton Villa after coming as, a, uh, well, he came on loan, but night has been confirmed. Although a lot of people don't really know how much is that, but news coming that is about 17 million pounds that has been confirmed, 20 million euros for Coutinho to be a permanent player of Axton Villa. This is good. Yeah, this is a, this is a very good development, sincerely, because the Axton Villa team, they are more like a team in progress mm. sincerely so and him coming in he came is coming in with the experience so that is experience is really needed and to be honest with you when he came in then the first two three matches we saw his impact age is on his side but the experience is on his side mm. so the experience will still be needed in the next season at least to prepare an aston villa away from where they are now so it's a very good move a very good move. That will be the one to close this show, show for this uh, hour. Well, 360 Sport on Trust TV. It has been a wonderful time with all our Peters. It's a pleasure talking sports with you, Adeni. Good morning. I am Adeni Aji Shafir. Thanks for watching.